few more that we're going to come across. Now, sometimes we have fractions. No need to panic. If you're comfortable with fractions, just go ahead and solve this equation. Undo the math. So I look at this and say, well, I have subtraction. I want to undo that. So I'm going to undo it with addition. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, negative 4 thirds and positive 4 thirds would be 0 thirds. 0 thirds is 0. So I'm just left with this 1 half v on the left side of the equation. 5 thirds plus 4 thirds is 9 thirds. Well, I can reduce 9 thirds. 9 over 3 is 3. So now we have 1 half v equals 3. And I'm going to use that reciprocal. I want to undo this 1 half. So I multiply by its reciprocal. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And now the, this reduces v equals 3 times 2 over 1, which is just 3 times 2, 6. And then I can check my work. Half of 6 is 3. 3 minus 4 thirds equals 5 thirds. Well, 3, I'd have to have that common denominator. And sometimes checking your work can be more time consuming than finding the solution. But it's a good thing to do because you want to know you're right. So half of 6 is 3. 3 is the same in terms of having a denominator of 3. I'd multiply it by 3 over 3. So I'd get 9 thirds. 9 thirds minus 4 thirds is 5 thirds. 9 minus 4 is 5 over 3. 5 over 3. So it does work. Now, there's another way to do it if you're not comfortable with those fractions. When it comes to equations, we can eliminate the fractions using a tool we learned before, and that's the least common denominator. So I'm just going to assess my fractions. I have a half. I have a th third. So 2 and 3 are my denominators. The LCD of these fractions is going to, and I'll write it up here, the LCD is 6. If I multiply every term of an equation by the LCD, it will eliminate all the fractions. So I'm going to multiply this side by 6 and this side by 6. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So if we look at this, if I use the distributive property, Half of 6 is 3, and I'll write it over here, 3v. 6 times a negative 4 thirds, well, 6 over 3 would be 2 times that 4 would be negative 8. And then here, 6 times 5 thirds, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2 times that 5 is 10. Now we have 3v minus 8 equals 10. Well, let's see what happens. I want to undo this math. I'm going to add 8. And we notice this looks very different than it did before, but there's no fractions because we use that LCD. So here this goes away, and I get 3v equals 10 plus 8 is 18. And if we notice this is multiplication, we can undo it using division. 3 over 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. What do we notice? v equals 6, v equals 6, we got the exact same answer. So either way you work with it, you're going to get that answer. If you're comfortable with fractions and you notice these have a common denominator, you can go ahead and do it this way. If you're not comfortable with fractions, with an equation, you can multiply through with an, by LCD. This only works for equations, not expressions. All right, let's look at this example. Now, it's looking a little more intimidating. There's more uh, operations. And now we're introducing parentheses. But we're still going to do the same thing. The first thing I'm going to do is eliminate any parentheses. I identify there's parentheses here. So I can use the distributive property to eliminate them. 3 times z and 3 times 4. Negative 5 times z. Negative 5 times a negative 9, watch those signs. A negative times a negative is positive. 5 times 9 is 45. So we get a positive 45. Now, I notice there's a z over here and a z over here. Before I do anything else with the numbers, I'm going to get my z's together. So I do that little assessment. What is the larger value? 
positive 3z or negative 5z? Well, obviously, a positive is a larger value than the negative. So the negative is the smaller value. That's the one I'm going to move. How do I move this? Well, if it's negative, I can add it, and it'll be gone from this side. Property of equality, what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to add 5z. So this gives me 8z plus 12 equals the z's are gone here, negative 5 and positive 5 z's, no more z's. And I also notice that these are just numbers, so I'm going to combine them right now. 45 and 23 is 68. And now I look at this and say, well, that's a simple equation that we've worked on, similar ones. So I can undo this addition with subtraction. And so I'm subtracting this. It's going to go away. Subtract 12 from this side, and I'm going to get 56. And now I see 8 times z is 56. I can undo that with division. Let's write it over here. 8z equals 56. Divide both sides by 8. 8 over 8 is 1. z equals 56 divided by 8 is 7. So I just determined that z equals 7. I need to check my work. This, there was a lot of processes involved here to come to that conclusion, it's very common that we might make a sign error or we might combine the wrong terms. So let's make sure that's a true statement. So I'm going to go back to the original problem. And I'm going to check my work, because I want to know that I'm right. So if I put 7 in here, that's the solution I found. 7 plus 4 is 11. 3 times 11 is 33. So this side of the equation is 33. Let's see what we get over here. If I put 7 in here, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. Negative 5 times negative 2. A negative times a negative is a positive 10. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 23 is 33. That is a true statement. 33 is 33. If I get this true statement, it is what it is. This is the answer. I am correct. Now, I have an example right here. 2 times the quantity, 3y minus 6, equals negative 4y plus 18. Why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own? Uh, it's very similar to the last one. Good luck and keep practicing. We're going to look at an application problem where we have to solve an equation. The example is the distance from Kingsford, Michigan to Escanaba, Michigan is 55 miles. This distance is half the distance from Kingsford to Green Bay, Wisconsin. How far is it from Kingsford to Green Bay? So let's assess. What are we told? We're told that the distance from Kingsford to Escanaba is 55 miles. This distance, 55 miles, is half the distance from Kingsford to Green Bay. Is half the distance of Kingsford to Green Bay how far is it from Kingsford to Green Bay? That's what we don't know. That's what I'm going to assign the variable. So if I read this, 55 miles is half the distance that we're looking for from Kingsford to Green Bay. So now I can solve this equation. And to solve this equation, I want to undo this multiplication of a fraction. So I would divide by the fraction. How do I divide by a fraction? I multiply, and I'll do it right here by its reciprocal, the reciprocal of that. What I do to one side, I do to the other, which is going to be 2 over 1, which is just 2. So here, this reduces to 1. 1x one is just x. 2 over 1 is just 2. 2 times 55 is 110. Now we reassess and reread the problem. It asks me, how far is it from Kingsford to Green Bay? 110? 110 what? It is 110 miles, because we always remember our units. So it's 110 miles from Kingsford, Michigan, to Green Bay, Wisconsin. So that's how we set them up, and that's how we solve them. And don't forget those units when working with application problems. So this has been section 5.3. Thank you for watching.